Mr. Ramirez, before the break, you were talking about the different ways that you would package cocaine. Correct. At some point in time, did you start sending cocaine by sea? Yes. The cocaine that you would send by sea, would you wrap it or package it any differently? Yes. Can you describe for the jury what that would, that process would entail? Correct. After the kilo of cocaine was manufactured, we placed protective plastic around it that we called a condom. It's like a rubber that goes all around the kilo of cocaine to protect it from water precisely. What color was this rubber? Different colors. Such as? Sometimes it was brown, yellowish, white. It depended. Did you ever use black rubber to package your cocaine? Yes, many times. Now, you also testified that before the cocaine would get wrapped in the tape. Actually, let me strike that. I believe you said after you put a tape on it, you would put a brand on the cocaine? Correct. What is a brand? What do you mean by that? A brand is an identifier that you place on the cocaine so that I can know that the cocaine belongs to me. What kind of brands did you use to mark your kilos of cocaine? I used several brands such as Reina, Metro, Clinton, Rolex, one that had a scorpion on it, a sticker with like a horse on it, another with a dollar sign, among others. Why would you use different brands to mark your cocaine? Because when we had cocaine seizures in the United States, we would then decide to change the brand to try to keep it away from the authorities. They would be thinking it wasn't the same cocaine. In the 20 years that you were a drug trafficker, did you just tell us every single brand that you used to mark your cocaine? No, not all. The ones I remember. Now, I'd like to turn your attention to the first time you met the defendant. Correct. You testified that the defendant started to receive your cocaine in approximately 1990. When did you have your first meeting with the defendant? Approximately in the beginning of the 90s. Where did you meet the defendant? I met the defendant. I met him at the lobby of a hotel in Mexico City. When did you first hear the defendant's name? I heard it from Mr. I heard it from a Mr. Mayo Zambada at a meeting that I had with him in Tijuana, Mexico. Who is Mayo Zambada? Mayo Zambada is one of the heads of the Sinaloa Cartel or the Federation. Did you ever meet Mayo Zambada? Yes. Approximately when did you first meet Mayo Zambada? Approximately at the end of 1989. Sorry, Your Honor, I'm looking for something. I'm showing you what's been marked for identification as Government Exhibit 2B. And I believe without objection, I would ask to move this into evidence, Your Honor. It already is in evidence. I believe 2A is already in evidence. All right, no objection? There's no objection. It's received. Who is this? Mayo Zambada. And what did Mayo Zambada tell you about the defendant? He told me, I'm going to introduce you to a compadre of mine. You will be very interested in meeting him, and he will be too. At this time that you, that Mr. Zambada mentioned the defendant, were you sending cocaine to Mr. Zambada? Yes. Do you know why it was that the defendant wanted to meet with you? Mr. Zambada? No, why the defendant wanted to meet you. To start receiving my cocaine from Colombia and to Mexico. Now, you said that this meeting happened in a hotel in Mexico City? Correct. Who was present at this first meeting? Mr. Guzman Loera was present, his brother Arturo, El Pollo, a lieutenant of his that they called, or we called El Gordo, one of my lieutenants called Sergio Ramirez, a.k.a. Pechuga, me, and there was a Colombian woman called Cristina. What was Cristina's role in this first meeting? Connect me to Mr. Guzman Loera. So what happened when you get to the hotel? I arrived first. After that, Mr. Guzman Loera arrived with his brother Arturo and El Gordo. How did the defendant introduce his brother and El Gordo? Mr. Guzman Loera said, this is my bosom buddy Arturo and this is my first man on board. You use the word C-A-R. Continue, please. 
you use the word C-A-R-N-A-L. What was your understanding of what that means? It's a word that Mexicans use to describe their brother. Showing you what's in evidence as Government Exhibit 3, who is that? That's Arturo Guzman Loera, a.k.a. El Pollo. And you said that the defendant also introduced you to Gordo? Do you remember how he introduced you? Yes. What did the defendant say? He said, this is my first man on board. How is it that you remember that phrase exactly? Because I was in the Colombian Navy and that was a term we used in the Navy and it drew my attention because it was a military term. Showing you what's in evidence as Government Exhibit 73. Who is that? This is El Gordo. Mr. Ramirez, what was the purpose of this first meeting that you had with this defendant? To propose a shipment of my cocaine to him from Colombia for him to receive it in Mexico and subsequently transport it to the United States. Did you discuss the details of this business proposition with the defendant in this first meeting? We spoke about some of them. Who participated in this part of the conversation? Mr. Guzman Loera, his brother Arturo, El Gordo, my lieutenant Sergio Ramirez, and me. I'd like to show you for identification purposes. No objection. Actually, without objection, Government Exhibit 84 will move this into evidence, Your Honor. Received. Who is this? This is my lieutenant, Sergio Ramirez. And when you say he was your lieutenant, what responsibilities did he have for you? And let's focus on these early years in 1990. Coordinate with the Sinaloa cartel, people regarding logistics of receiving my airplanes with my cocaine from Colombia so that subsequently the Sinaloa people would transport it to the United States and deliver it to me there. Mr. Ramirez, you said that you discussed some of the details of this business transaction with the defendant. Can you tell the jury some of the topics you discussed at this very first meeting with the defendant? Yes, yes. We spoke about the amount of airplanes I could send him. Did the defendant say or ask you anything specifically about the quantity of planes you could send him? Yes, he told me to send him as many as I could. What else did you discuss? We discussed the airstrips, their location, possibly which states of the Mexican Republic, the possibility of sending a pilot to get to know the airstrips in order to be able to identify them. We talked to or made arrangements for the possible times of arrival of my airplanes to those airstrips. We spoke about the amount of kilos that the airplanes could hold depending on the location of the airstrip. I'd like to show you what's in evidence as Government Exhibit 502. In this first meeting, you said that you discussed the defendant told you there were locations where he could receive your planes. Correct. What locations were those in Mexico? Possibly in Nayarit, Durango, Sinaloa, and Sonora. Could I ask you to circle those states on the map in front of you, please? Now, you were just saying that you discussed with the defendant the quantity of cocaine that you could send to him. How much cocaine could you fit on these airplanes? So, it depended on the distance they had to fly from Colombia to Mexico, depending on how close it was or how far it was. What was the range? The range was 600 kilos of cocaine to 1,300 kilos of cocaine. Can you explain to the jury why it was that the location of the landing strip would determine the quantity of the drugs you would put on the plane? Correct. Because, for example, if the airstrip was in Nayarit, that's further south than, for example, the state of Sonora. So the distance that my planes would have to fly to get to Nayarit is a lot shorter than, for example, if they had to go to Sonora. And since they were shorter, they could carry more cocaine because they could carry less fuel. The farther away it was, the more fuel, more weight for the fuel, less room, fewer kilos of cocaine. Did you also discuss with the defendant anything about the quantity, the quality of the cocaine you would send to him? Yes. What did the defendant tell you? To send him 100% pure cocaine, optimum cocaine. Were you offended by this request? Not at all. Why not? 
because I was the party that was most interested always in sending pure cocaine in order to have a reputation for myself because of my cocaine being so good with the Sinaloa cartel people and also for the United States to sell it because the clients would then seek it. They would search for it. What other topics did you discuss with the defendant at this first meeting with him? Well, he told me what we spoke about, the price he was going to charge me. How were you going to pay the defendant to transport your cocaine? I was going to pay him. Well, he was going to keep a percentage of my cocaine. What does that mean? For example, let's say I was sending him a thousand kilos of cocaine. He would charge me 40% to transport that cocaine to the United States. 40% of a thousand kilos is 400 kilos of cocaine. And I would receive 60% of the cocaine. That is, I would receive 600 kilos of cocaine in the United States. The other Mexican traffickers that you were working with, did they also charge you a percentage fee? Also, yes. How did the defendant's rate of 40% compare to the other traffickers? Well, I had been paying 37% before my business deal with Mr. Guzman, who was charging 40%, so it was more expensive. Did the defendant explain to you why he was charging you a higher price than the other traffickers? Yes. What did the defendant tell you? He said, I'm a lot faster. Try me and you'll see. And your planes and your cocaine and your pilots are going to be secure because I have very good arrangements. When the defendant told you that your planes would be secure, what did you understand that to mean? That the corruption arrangements he had for receiving, receiving the planes were good, they were effective, and that would make me feel sure for my the security or the safety of my planes and my pilots. How would the defendant's corruption payments make your pilots and your cocaine safe? Well, precisely because when the planes arrived to the Mexican airstrips, they were being protected by the federal police. They were receiving my planes and the cocaine, and on many occasions, they were doing the transportation themselves. At the end of this meeting with the defendant, the first meeting that you had with the defendant, did you finalize every single detail of your business arrangement with the defendant? No. Was the defendant carrying a weapon during this meeting? Yes. What kind of gun? A pistol. So what was your understanding after this first meeting of the business deal you had arranged with the defendant? That we had an agreement for me to send my planes with my coke in from Colombia for him to receive it in Mexico and to transport to transport it for me to the United States. And what was, what was, did you finalize on the percentage that you would pay? Yes. And what was that? 40%, 40% of my cocaine was to be the payment that I had to make to him for transporting my cocaine to the United States. 